privilege to be a part of your Sunday mornings. As you know, the last two weeks we have been learning about bearing the fruits of the Spirit by abiding in God. So I have been thinking about this word abiding. You know, the word abiding means lasting a little longer. Yes, it is about lasting a little longer in the presence of God. The Bible says there is a secret place reserved for the lovers of God, where they sit near Him and they receive the revelation and His secret promises. God wants to share and reveal His secrets to you. But for that, we need to be found in the secret place and last a little longer. So today, let us lean into the presence of God and linger a little longer to receive His revelations and His secret promises. So come join with me while our pastor Derek D'Souza leads us into a beautiful time of praise and worship. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day to be in the presence of God. I'm so thankful every day for every second of our lives. Truly, the Bible said it is good to give thanks to God. I want to tell you, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. The Bible also tells us to forget not all His benefits who heals all your diseases, who forgives all your sins. Recently, I came across a person who, you know, and I'm sure you also may have come across this in your life, where you may have given someone something or blessed them with something or done something for someone and those, you know, someone would have not even acknowledged or not even messaged you or not even thanked you for it. How many of you have gone through a situation like that? I'm sure many of you have gone through it, where you've gone out of your way to do something, to bless someone, and uh, you didn't get the response that you were looking for. Well, I just want to tell you today, while I was thinking about this today, the Lord reminded me how He does so many things for us in our lives, and we don't stop to give Him thanks. You know, it pains our hearts when we do something for somebody and we don't get the right response. But I want you to think about God. When we do something and we don't get the right response, we cannot bear it. We make sure we tell at least 10 people about it, how ungrateful that person is. I want you to think about God. You know, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits who heals all your diseases, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who redeems your life from the pit. I want you think, to think today about all the things that God has done to, for you and how ungrateful we have been at times. We have begun to think that we are entitled to receive it. Some of us think that we should get it. We may not say it, but the very fact that we don't give thanks it tells a lot about our condition of our heart. So I want you to just take time today as we begin to praise and thank God for His goodness. Thank God for everything in your life, for the air you're breathing, for the health you have, for the joy you have, for your family, for, your, for the protection on your life, for your job, for your finances. Even if you don't have something, thank God you're alive because so many people have not seen today. Would you join me and sing this song? Sing it with me. Kya de sakta hu? Kya la sakta hu? Kehta tujhe bas shukriya. Oh, kya de sakta hu? Sing it with me. Kya la sakta hu? Kehta tujhe bas shukriya Tujh mein hi meri subah 
तुझ में ही हर शाम तुझ से ही करता शुरू हर कोई का तुझ में ही मेरी सुबह तुझ में ही हर शाम तुझ से ही करता शुरू हर कोई का शुक्रिया करता हूँ मैं लेके तेरा नाम आदर और धन्यवाद आज तेरे नाम शुक्रिया कहता तुझे बस शुक्रिया ओ क्या दे सकता हूँ क्या ला सकता हूँ कहता तुझे बस शुक्रिया We give you praise, O oh God. I bring my praise. I bring you worship, O oh God. I thank you, God, that even though we are unfaithful, you are a faithful God. You have never left nor forsaken us, O oh God. You have silently waited, patiently waited, O oh God. Your word commands us to bring thanksgiving and praise into your courts, Lord. And Jesus, we enthrone you in this place, Lord. We enthrone you with our praise. We enthrone you with our praise, O oh God. We extol you with a song. You're the lover of my life, Lord. Oh, I will seek you with all my heart. I will seek you. Oh my heart I will 
to seek you with all my strength. I will love you all the days of my life. Just tell him that. I will love you all the days of my life. Forever you're the same, Lord. Forever you're the same, you never change. Just worship him, worship him. Love him, love him. He's so kind, he's so gentle, he's so forgiving, he's so patient. Oh God, you maintain covenant to a thousand generations, oh God. Your long suffering and your mercy never fails. They are new. They are new Every morning Is your faithfulness Is your faithfulness Oh God Your love is so kind mm -hmm. Oh Jesus sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praises He hears faith Yeah sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praises He hears faith Oh, wake my soul And sing, sing his praise aloud Sing His praise aloud Sing it with me Oh, wake my soul and sing Sing His praise aloud Sing His praise aloud Oh, yeah, yeah It's time to worship Him There is a sound that changes things The sound of His people on His knees Oh, wake up you slumbering It's time to worship Him Awake my soul and sing Sing His praise aloud Sing His praise aloud
sing his praise aloud. Oh, awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. Oh, yes, oh God. Oh, awake my soul and sing. Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud. Oh, wake my soul and sing. Sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud. We worship You, God. We worship You. We bow down before you. You worthy God, you are worthy. How you bless my life, God. You fill me up, Lord. I'm gonna praise you in every storm, oh God. For I am not without you. I am not without you Greater is he that is in me For I am not without you Not without you Greater is he that is in me Oh, awake my soul Sing his praise aloud. Sing his praise aloud. Yes, God, awake our souls, O oh God. Awake our souls that we may hear your voice today, Lord, even as the word is spoken. May we never remain the same, Lord. May the word pierce our hearts, O oh God. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord. And awake, O oh God, everyone to the voice of your Spirit, Lord. Even as we go in the Word, we declare that our lives are moving closer to you, Lord. We declare that the things of the world are moving away. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to our online home and uh, we are so excited to have you here. For those of you who know me, praise the Lord. For those of you who don't and you are wondering where Pastor Derek is, well, he is behind the camera today and uh, my name is Kim and I am a Jesus lover and I love you because I know that you love Jesus too. And let me tell you something, if you are watching this video right now, know that you are here not because of a link that was sent to you, but because the Holy Spirit drew you into this video and He has a word for you in this season. You know, we are going through an unusual season which we have never seen anything like this happen before. And forget about us but you know I was talking to my parents and I was talking to uh, Pastor Derek's mom and I was asking them whether they have seen a season like this and they were like no we have never seen things happen at, at, at such a large magnitude and you know uh, lockdown and, and uh, cyclone and, and, and so many things back to back and sometimes you know when when we go through unusual seasons like this we sit and wonder you know god where are you if this is your question this morning let me tell you that you are in his grip you are in the grip of an almighty god a living god who watches over you who cares for you you know I think of a time uh, when when I was young and uh, I was I think uh, 10 or 11 years old and we had uh, all our relatives um, 
come all the way from north of India to our place in Mumbai. And you know how it is when you come to Bombay, you want to visit the beaches. And uh, so we made this plan and we visited one of the famous beaches in Bombay and, and it was a good time. We played a lot in the water and by the end of it, you know, I was sitting near the shore. I was looking at the waters and I was with my little cousin and, and we were having a good time. And my uncle came to me and, you know, he said that, come on, I'm going to take you both close to the waves. And we were like, you know, no, we, we don't want to go. And he said, don't worry, you know, I will be holding your hands. And can you see those huge waves coming and hitting the shore? We are going to go right there deep in. So we gathered some courage and he said, okay, you know, as long as uncle is holding our hands, it's going to be good. So this is what my uncle did. He caught my hand with his left hand and he caught my cousin's hand. And this is how we were walking close to the wave. And as I was walking close, I could see these huge, gigantic waves hitting the shore. And my heart was beating fast, but I was like, okay, we, we all are in it together. And as the wave came close to me, it so happened that my uncle, he forgot about me. So the plan was when the wave hits us, he is going to lift us both high in the air. And that is how, you know, he will prevent the wave from hitting us. But when actually the wave hit us, he was holding his daughter's hand, he was holding my hand and he lifted my cousin up and he forgot about me. And in that moment, I felt so lost. You know, it, I could not breathe because it's, you can imagine a child and, and a huge wave over the child. I, I could not breathe. I could not feel the ground beneath my feet. And by the time the wave settled down, I was crying and I said, Uncle, what did you do? You never lifted me up. And Uncle said that, don't worry, I was holding your hand. And this is your God, you know, sometimes huge waves hit us. Sometimes things happen in our life that are beyond our control. And then we are asking God, God, what is happening? And this is God's word for you, that you are my child. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. And when you walk through the waters, the waters will not overwhelm you. When you walk, yes, yes, you are going to walk through waters. You are going to walk through the fire. But the fire will not burn you. The waters will not overwhelm you. Because you are in His grip. Amen. I just thought I'll encourage you with that. And uh, let's get into the word. I hope you are excited. You know, I was uh, looking at the Bible and the Bible is filled with unusual events and incidents and that is bound to happen because the Bible is a love story of an unusual God, a living God, an eternal God walking hand in hand with a finite man and so you know when God walks with you things are going to be different, things are not going to be normal and the, the, the beauty of it is, you know, at the end of it, it is not just God walking with you. We serve a God who is in us. The God who we are, you know, we are in His arms. And He, He is in us. And the Bible says that greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. And uh, I want to draw your attention to one unusual incident that happened in the Bible that really got me thinking. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, can I ask you to open the book of Joshua? And we are going to go to Joshua chapter 10. So before we uh, get into that key verse that got me thinking, let me give you a background. So what has happened is Moses is dead. And Joshua is the leader now and he has brought all the Israelites into the promised land and now what they are doing is they are conquering cities and they are taking possession of the land and it so happens that there's a city called Gibeon 
and uh, the people in Gibeon they they come into friendship with Israel okay it's it's a long story probably you can go uh, you can read about it later in your free time but uh, Gibeon and Israel they become friends and when the enemies uh, the, the nations the cities around Gibeon come to know about it they are very upset so what happens is five kings come together they take their armies and now they are saying that we are going to attack Gibeon because they are friendly with Israel and uh, so these five kings they take their armies and now they have attacked the city of Gibeon now Gibeon is in need and what they do is they they call Joshua and said Joshua come you know you come with your army and help us and so we read in the Bible that throughout the night Joshua and his army take an all-night journey and in the morning they reach the city of Gibeon and they attack and 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 before they could even get into this war God gave a word to Joshua saying that you are going to win it okay so with that word in his heart Joshua and his entire army they attack and they win over and and something amazing happens here you know we we read that uh, God starts fighting on behalf of Joshua on behalf of Israel and and if you read here it says that suddenly God is throwing hailstones on the people on the enemies and and, and the word of God says that more were killed by the hailstones than by the sword and now they are almost on the verge of a complete whitewash you know they are on the verge of uh, winning this battle and then Joshua realizes that the sun is setting and look at this you know look at this verse Joshua chapter 10 verse 12 look at what Joshua does on the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel so this is Joshua he's saying to the Lord Sun stand still over Gibeon and you moon over the valley of Ajalon and so the Sun stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself on its enemies Wow now this is something crazy you know this is like God here is Joshua a man and he is is not even talking to the Sun or the moon he's not commanding the Sun and moon he is telling the Lord in the presence of Israel Sun stop where you are stop moon where you are stop so it's 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 if you read the other version it's almost like you know Joshua giving a command to God asking him to stop the Sun and the moon and when I was reading this I was blown away I said Lord from where did this man get such confidence you know look at the audacity of this man you know this is an incident that is completely new there's no precedent about it you know there's, there's not parting of of a red sea that you know joshua has seen moses do this is something that has never happened before and i i went on asking the lord i said lord why how could you hear him how how did it happen and how did you know you 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 happen to listen to a man and uh, I, with this thought in my mind and I was lying on my bed and I was still in conversation with God and I say God how could you listen to the man and and God gave me the answer you know what God said I listened to him because you know that's what I told him to do and I was like wow you know why why Joshua could do why Joshua could say what he said because God told him to say like that it's like before Joshua could enter into that battle God and Joshua were sitting together they already were discussing what is going to happen they were discussing the strategies and and God told him you're going to win and this is how you're going to win so this is not written in the Bible okay this is my revelation this is how God spoke to me God said that I already told him what he is supposed to do so what you saw what you are reading that was already discussed it was settled between us so there was 
no ounce of doubt in Joshua's mind that it's not going to work. Wow. You know, this is how God wants us to live our lives. You know, many of you are fighting battles in your life. You are fighting battles. But here is where the problem is, you know, we are fighting battles in the wrong place. We are trying to win battles in the wrong place. You know, your battles are won not where your enemy is, but your battleground is where your God is. And uh, Joshua, before he could get into the battle, he and God had already settled the deal. And this is what I want to draw your attention to this morning. This is the crux of my message. You and I got to fight the battle from the right battleground. You and I need to be in a place where our victory is decided in our private, in our secret place where everything is decided and then what happens outside what happens in the natural is basically just a manifestation it's just an overflow of what happens in your secret place i'll give you another example okay we know the story of uh, elijah and uh, you, we know that you know elijah the prophet uh, goes to king ahab and and he says it's not going to rain and there's a famine now for 3 years and after 3 years look at this first kings chapter 18 verse 41 okay this is what you see happen in the natural first kings chapter 18 verse 41 elijah said to ahab go up eat and drink for there is a sound of a heavy rain so here you see the manifestation here Elijah is telling he's declaring Ahab he's declaring to Ahab just as Joshua you know said to the son he's telling get up because it's going to rain now how how did he say that and if you go now to the first verse in that chapter it'll give you the key look at this before first kings 1841 had to happen first kings 18 1 had to happen and look at what first kings 18 1 says god telling elijah go and present yourself to ahab and i will send rain on the land so basically what elijah was doing was an overflow of his secret place you know Amos 3 7 says that surely the God Israel God does nothing without revealing his secrets to his prophet surely he does nothing without he reveals without he revealing his secrets to his prophets now why is that because you see God operates from a supernatural realm he operates from a spirit realm and in order for him to connect in order for him to connect to the natural realm he needs a connection he needs a platform and that platform is words so that's how the prophetic works you know it's it's God who stirs up the heart of a man and the fire burns and then the man speaks and that's what a prophecy is and when the word is spoken it gives the supernatural god an access to work into a natural realm so we know we know that god reveals his secrets he reveals his he wants to reveal his secrets to you but there's one more thing in order for me to receive those secrets from God I need to be found in the secret place I need to be in a place where God is you remember what Matthew 6 6 says do you know what happens in the secret place do you know who is there in the secret place Matthew 6 6 says that when you go when you pray you close the door you shut the door and the God who is in the secret 
God is in the secret place. God is in that private chamber. He is present there. You are never alone in your secret place. God is present there. And He wants every day of your life to be an encounter with Him. Every day. You know, that's how Jesus worked. Whatever ministry He did, whether whatever decisions He took, it was an overflow from this place. It was coming from this place. You know, Joshua learned this principle well. In fact, the first time the Bible speaks about Joshua, mention, mentions about Joshua, it is, um, it talks about, okay, I can't find that scripture. But it talks about a time where uh, Moses is alive and the Amorites, they attack Israel. And, and Moses tells Joshua, you go and fight the battle, whereas I will go with Aaron and Hur on top of the hill and we will lift our hands towards the heaven. And we know the story, right? As long as Moses' hands were lifted, as long as Moses was praying, as long as Moses was encountering God in that private chamber, Joshua was winning the battle. And in the end, what happens? Moses, you know, he lifts his hands to the throne. You know, these hands are normal hands. They cannot do much. But when they are in a secret chamber, when they are lifted to the living God, they, they are no longer normal hands. They become holy hands. They become holy hands and nobody can come against holy hands because now these hands are the hands of God. And we know the story at the end of that battle, you know, Joshua and Israelites, they, they, they taste victory. And this is what God tells Moses. Moses, make sure... You write this on a scroll and make sure you recite this into Joshua's ear again and again. And this is where Joshua was coming from. And this is what I want us to remind ourselves. That we need to be in the right battleground. We need to be here with God. Many of us are striving here. We are stuck here. We are fighting our battles here. We are fighting a bad boss here. We are fighting a, a, a breaking marriage here. And this morning God is inviting you to this place. Because this is where you will know your God. And this is where you will do mighty exploits. This is where you will meditate on the word of God and this is where you will go and say in the name of Jesus rise up and walk this is where you will fellowship with the Holy Spirit this is where you will you will come with your brokenness with your tears with your weaknesses you will cry here in this place and when you walk out of this place you will be bold like a lion oh nothing nothing will be able to unfaze you you will say that even though I walk here even though even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death I will fear no evil even though I fall seven times yet I will rise again because the world will know that your 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 battle is won here in this place in this place and this is what I want uh, to remind you all this morning God is calling you to that secret place you know i was studying the life of uh, joshua and so many hidden gems i could i could get out of it and uh, you know joshua uh, was a form of jesus and if you read the book of joshua initially so many times it says that early in the morning he would rise up what was he rising up for uh, I think I know it. He was spending time with the Lord. Look at this, another incident. You remember the battle of uh, between Israel and the, and the city of Ai and, and what happens. And, uh, uh, you know, somebody steals uh, some stuff from devoted things from Ai during the battle. And then God rebukes them. And then now Israel is going to fight the city of Ai and look at this this verse I you know I I enjoy getting these scriptures from the Word of God that nobody has touched and 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 it really really blesses my heart look at this now 
Joshua is leading the nation of Israel and they are moving towards the city of Ai. And look at what Joshua 8:13 says, while the soldiers took their position, Joshua spent the night in the valley. Wow. You know there's a scripture in 1 Kings chapter 20 verse 28 it says that our god is not just a god of hills but he is the god of valleys and joshua spent the night in the valley and next day you know israel won the battle and another time you know i think most of you will be aware of it every time god would call moses up the mountain there was a time when when god called him up on mount sinai and and moses went up and moses took joshua along and joshua could not joshua was not called up but he stayed he stayed on that mountain while there were people at the foothills of the mountain and and they completely lost it they 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 were waiting for the leader to come back with a word from god and and one day became two days three days one week two weeks and when they could not see any sign of moses they completely lost it they they made an idol and they began worshiping but here is another guy joshua the word of god says that he carried a different spirit he was there on that mountain he was all alone and still he was waiting he was waiting he was waiting and the word of god says that those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength and they will mount up on wings like eagles and that i believe was the strength of joshua's life that he he enjoyed his private time with the lord that he had a secret place he had a moment and moments of encounter where he would spend time loving god and enjoying his presence and let us go to another passage you know this is exodus chapter 33 verses 7 to 11 you know when i was reading this passage this really blew my mind you know this showed me the heart of god, a god like never before and i was so blessed i was so blessed look at this exodus chapter 33 verses 7 to 11 and i'm reading the amplified version Now Moses used to take his own tent and pitch it outside the camp far away from the camp what Moses used to take his own tent Did you get it Okay before we get into this you know we all have in the old testament when we look at god we we all have an impression of a god who is so angry who is so upset but that is never the case you know our god is a loving god and he always always desired the fellowship of man his heart beats for you his heart beats for you he 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 desires to come close to you and that is what was happening in the old testament every time you know god would try to come close to man man would withdraw you know man would go a step behind every time god would would say okay offer his hand to man man would go on breaking the heart of god and and this was uh, if you see the book of exodus it's 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 everywhere you know every time you know god is saying i want to speak to you and and the people of israel would say moses it's better you speak to us we don't want god speak uh, we don't want god to speak to us if he speaks to us we will surely die and imagine imagine how it must be breaking the heart of god and and then you know this is what the people decided they said we don't want to hear god we want to hear you moses we want to we are happy to hear a man we don't want to hear you god and so every time god would want to speak to Moses God would call him up the mountain you know God said okay i want to speak to you Moses you come up the mountain but okay keep that in mind okay now you look at exodus 
chapter 33 verse 7 to 11 Moses used to take his own tent you know this was his own tent you know we this is remember this is talking about tent of meeting this is different from a tabernacle that God um, told Moses to build this is different from that and and when God told uh, Moses he gave him a list of rules and and conditions and you know uh, uh, his terms that how the tabernacle should be built and if you look at it it was laborious you know that tabernacle has had to be so exotic and 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 linen and gold and silver and the measurements had to be so precise and and when we look at that and we're like god you know we we kind of feel that you know god is making it so difficult for us to come close to him but look at this Moses is taking his own tent you know that's his tent that's the tent where he sleeps that's almost you know as good as second hand he takes his own tent and he used to pitch it outside the camp far away from the camp and he used to call it this is you know this is happening before God gave before the tabernacle was built by Moses and his team so and he called this tent of meeting remember this was not moses's tent of meeting this was not joshua's tent of meeting it was tent of meeting meeting place where anybody could meet meeting of god with his own people and look at the next verse and everyone who sought the lord would go out to this tent the temporary tent of meeting which was outside the camp wow this tent of meeting this place of encounter was open for everybody it was not just reserved for moses it was open for everybody this invitation was there on the table placed by god you know so in, on one hand god is saying if i want to speak to you moses you come up on the mountain and here you see another side of god it's like man wants to speak to god and god is saying okay i i will still speak to you on your own terms i am willing to be with you because i love you so much i i enjoy your company so much that it doesn't matter whether your tent is used it doesn't matter who you are everyone everyone this this invitation was open for everyone everybody who desired to sought the lord was welcome into this tent and whenever moses went out to the tent all the people would rise and stand each at his tent door and look at moses until he entered the tent so here we see moses you know he pitched a tent outside it's not very far because uh, the people are able to see what moses is doing and he god has given moses and everybody literally everybody open access to come and bring your problems come and discuss what are the issues that are troubling you what is what is it that is bothering you that invitation is still open my dear friend god is inviting you you come come just as you are come without any conditions because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross but here sadly we read that the people they stayed at the door of their tents you know tent also speaks about your life it it talks about surrender so here is Moses he is completely surrendered his tent his life to God and here are the people who who are seeing Moses fellowship with god but they are satisfied to stand at the door of their tents they are not willing to move ahead and when the all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the tent door all the people would rise and worship each at his tent door so they were willing to worship god from far they were not willing to let go of their tent you know this is how we are you know we we love god we desire his fellowship but we are okay it's okay you know it's the pastor's job to spend time with the lord and bring a word it is the evangelist you know he's supposed to do that 
as for me i am happy in my tent i am i am happy in my comfort zone and this is what the people were doing you know they on one hand they were holding their tents they were seeing what was happening they they could see the cloud of glory above their tent above the tent of meeting where moses was but they were not willing to let go of their own tents and when the people saw the pillar of cloud when they saw the cloud when they saw the presence of god then they bowed down and worship you know many times we we have a private times with the lord and we are so driven by our senses we want to see things we want to feel those goosebumps we want to see that shivering or we want to see some gold dust falling but here is what god is drawing you to unconditional worship where we are not driven by our senses where we are in the presence of god knowing that he is in that place and this is how this is how joshua was different you know look at this and so the lord used to speak to moses face to face just as a man speaks to his friend friendship god desires your friendship and when moses returned to the camp his attendant joshua would be at the tent now i don't know whether moses when he would go to the tent with whether he would invite joshua uh i personally feel that you know he he may not be inviting joshua but i feel that joshua every time he saw moses walking towards that tent he wanted to be there he was so drawn by the presence of god that he wanted to be a part of it it didn't matter to him whether he got access inside the tent it didn't matter to him whether he was a part of the conversation but he loved god you know he enjoyed the presence of god and every time moses would go to the tent this man he would follow and he was driven by the presence of god whereas the people their eyes were fixed on moses this is what we read right the people they saw moses they were uh, looking at moses and when moses would enter in and the cloud would come and then they would worship but look at joshua his eyes were not fixed on moses his eyes were fixed on god his eyes were fixed on the presence of god and it was okay for him to stay outside and and the bible said that he would not depart he would not depart from the tent why because his eyes were never on moses if his eyes was was on moses if moses left the tent he would have followed moses back but he was so lost he was so lost in the presence of god that he would stay there and linger and linger and linger and i can almost imagine you know moses coming out of the tent and and you know he has finished his conversation with god whatever doubts whatever problems he had he has spoken to his friend everything is done and now you know picture this moses is walking out of the tent and and as he comes out of the tent i believe this is what must be happening he is seeing a, a, a joshua who is prostrate you know he is seeing joshua on the floor who is busy worshiping god and moses would almost be like okay joshua okay okay hold on hold on you know he is busy worshiping let me not disturb him and moses would go and here was joshua he was enjoying is come be with the lord he was enjoying god's presence and when i was reading this scripture you know what the holy spirit told me he told me that uh, kim this scripture is incomplete and uh, i was like lord how is it incomplete and uh, because you know god said you know you you have these conversations with the holy spirit and he tells you he reveals to you things that 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 are not mentioned in the word of god and and and, and i i really enjoy these times and 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 so so 
this verse ends here where it says that Joshua would not depart from the tent and and God said this is not it there's one more part to it that is not mentioned in the bible and i was so excited i said lord what is it he say you see this book was written by moses and moses knew only till here because after he finished meeting with me he left the tent and he wrote the scripture till here that joshua would not depart from the tent but this is not it you want to hear the full version as long as joshua did not depart from the tent god did not depart from the tent that's the full scripture as long as joshua lingered in that tent god was lingering in that tent god was enjoying the presence of joshua you know as long as he stayed there and he was worshiping god was with him this is your god this is my god he delights to be with you he delights to spend his time with you and he's waiting he's waiting for you he's waiting to reveal things to you he's waiting to give you answers to the questions that you are asking it's time we let go of our tents it's time we draw close to god you know sometimes we we have our times of fellowship with god and and we we think that lord does this really work you know i am not getting something out of it is it really working let me tell you this the times that you spend with god will never go in vain in fact those are the seeds that you are sowing and you will see the harvest of those times you know when joshua used to linger outside the tent he never got to see miraculous things being done through him you know he used to linger there at the tent when when the meeting was over between god and moses but god used moses it was moses who was doing the job it was moses who was bringing water out of out of the rock it was moses who was leading the way joshua never did anything miraculous but don't forget there came a time when joshua chapter 10 had to be written and i love it the way it ends it says that there has never been a time like this where god obeyed man you know remember joshua was the commander of the army and here is a commander and 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 god is obeying him that was the relationship that joshua had that was the harvest that he was saying so do not be discouraged you know the times that you are spending with the lord those times are precious hold on to it that's where again i say that's where you win your battles and i'm not done yet you know you want to see more of the heart of god for you look at this Look at this what John chapter 1 verse 14 says. It says it talks about Jesus where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And as you go on reading you come to John chapter 1 verse 14. It says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Wow. So you see in the Old Testament it was man pitching a tent where he could meet god pitching a tent for god and here is god through jesus his son he is so much in love with us that he left the heaven he left the highest of heavens and he pitched his tent among us would you take this moment to draw close to that god come on close your eyes close your eyes redene me sende think of god's love for you embera di amba sande jesus era de la amba sende oh thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord you are filling your people lord redene se This morning I believe God is drawing you close to him. 
he has pitched his tent among us because he wants to reveal his secrets to you and this is an open invitation to you would you draw close would you come back to the place the right battleground come back to the place where i'm going to teach you how to win wars i'm going to teach your fingers to fight bestendera de lare de besende thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you holy spirit oh thank you holy spirit i see you drawing people back to the prayer closet lord thank you jesus for lord i see the locks outside the prayer closets being broken thank you jesus i see i hear the sound of locks being broken lord resendera mari diende thank you lord no longer our secret places no longer our prayer closets will be empty god but lord thank you lord that we will be found in that secret place god we will be found in that place where you are god where you want to speak to us god where you want to reveal your secrets to us oh lord we ask forgiveness god for taking your presence for granted lord for standing afar off and being satisfied with the little that we saw but this season lord i thank you i thank you lord that we are drawing near we are drawing close to you lord we are drawing close to you daddy we are drawing close to you rabbi sendera de thank you jesus you know the most beautiful thing is to know your identity in christ you know he is a father he is your father when you know the value of that relationship when you understand the depth of that relationship you will not be you and i will not be like those israelites standing afar off and looking but we will draw near to god you know i don't know how it works with other mothers but with me every time i go into the bathroom one of my kids have to come and knock outside the door and you know i would be like screaming hey don't do that don't do that i'm coming out be patient and and they don't listen they mama i want to talk to you the other day i put shampoo on my head and 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 i'm washing my head and and here i have my son frantically knocking on the door mama please open the door i want to talk to you and i like with half of my eyes open and and i open the bathroom door a little bit and he is bought two pieces of apple and he saying mama this is your share i kept for you and i like oh my god can you not wait can you not see that i'm taking a bath the point is you know that's the power of relationship that's that's your strength you know when you know who you are in jesus when you know that you are a child of god when you know that he has given you unconditional access you will be different i pray that you know we will never take our secret place for granted that we will operate out of that place where god is and when you start to do that you know i want to declare over you prophetically three things are going to happen number 1 you will see a divine acceleration you know things that are stuck will start moving fast at a very fast pace you remember when um, elijah goes and tells ahab it's going to rain and he tells ahab now you go on your chariot down and before before you uh, reach the place down you know make sure you go fast otherwise the rain is going to catch up with you and we read the scripture that you know after elijah tells ahab that he runs and he runs so fast that he reaches before ahab could reach 
and that is what i'm talking about you know when when you start operating from your secret place when you start operating from the place where god is you will see divine acceleration in this season that is number 1 number 2 is you will get a supernatural boldness yes you know you if you think you are shy if you think you cannot do it that's a past because i know that locks to your secret door secret place have been opened and now you are going to be found in that secret place and when you come out when that becomes no no i'm not talking about sunday to sunday or or alternate day but i'm talking about when being in the secret place becomes a lifestyle when you start living that kind of life you know you are going to see a supernatural boldness you know we know that joshua was a courageous man he had a different spirit but if you go to uh, joshua chapter 1 and that is a time when moses is already dead and 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 god tells joshua you know moses my servant is dead and it's 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 as good as you know god why is god repeating that because the people Joshua and the people with so stuck you know they they felt so helpless without Moses and here is they they are so close to the promised land and and you can imagine you know a leader of the magnitude of Moses uh, was there yesterday and today he is gone and the people felt so helpless and so discouraged and here is where God comes and tells Joshua hey Moses is dead he's dead okay that's a close chapter now i want you to get into the promised land and if you read i i want you to read that okay Joshua chapter 1 god tells Joshua be bold and courageous because whatever i promised to Moses i'm going to give it i'm going to use you to get it and 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 again god tells him be bold and courageous because every place that you're going to keep your feet i'm going to give that to you and if that this was not not enough god tells him the third time have i not told you be bold and courageous you know joshua was in that moment i believe of weakness where he was he had he may be having some questions in his mind but you know he knew the principle he knew that his strength was going to come from that secret place from those times where he sowed where he spent time alone with god and and god gave him supernatural boldness and he could do things like we read in jo- joshua chapter 1 that had never happened before the same is going to happen to you okay number 1 is divine acceleration number 2 is supernatural boldness and number 3 you are going to be a finisher of things you know in on 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 that day if joshua uh, was not to tell the sun to stop from setting probably the battle would have gone into another day and you know uh, it would have been tiresome for the, the people the israelites who were fighting and it would have got unnecessarily dragged but because the sun stood still the victory was won on that day and i know many of you you know you have this tendency uh, within yourself where, where you start certain things and you are not able to complete you you take up a assignment and and you leave it halfway you take up a course or a job and then you know you uh, you just give up and and i believe when you make living in the secret place your lifestyle that curse is going to break the curse where things are left un- incomplete that curse is going to break over your life remember you have the dna of a god who is a finisher of things you know whatever god begins his word says that he is faithful to complete it when when jesus died on the cross he said it is finished so we serve a god who is a finisher you know he finishes things and as a child you carry his dna so you are going to be i declare it over your life that you are going to be a finisher of things so take up the things don't give up you know get back into your prayer closet get back into spending time with the lord and loving the lord no matter whether you feel like it or not no matter whether you see anything happening or not just spend time with the lord enjoy his presence and when you come out of that place i promise you you'll be a different person amen so i hope this word blessed you uh, i just wanted to reveal the heart of god to you and and i 
I pray that it will make you love Jesus more and more. God bless. upon